Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sonic Fun tutorial series here on my channel. I am Boomer, your host, and today we are continuing part two of Infinity Expansion. Today we're going to look at the power, that's right, this is the uh, 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 episode of Tim Allen and grunting all day long. We're going to look at all the things that generate, store, and charge with power inside of Infinity Expansion. So to start with, we're going to start with the hydro generators instead of what I had selected. We have two of them the hydro generator and the reinforced hydro generator now these i tend not to use too much because the uh, while they're very easy to use and set up the material requirements to make these two are pretty pricey in my opinion for the power generation uh, especially for the hydro generator only yielding 10 joules per second now to get these to work we simply need to waterlog them and get them connected to a power network now, I see this on a slime fun server all the time. Somebody go like this and says zero joules per second. They'll go WTF. They'll take a picture and say this doesn't work. And it's called impatience. You actually need to give these a few seconds for every parts to register. Eventually, you're going to see the network come on. Space these apart so that they don't interact with each other. But ultimately, what you're going to see here in a second is that this will actually kick in and start generating power. Now this is taking a little bit longer than it normally does. There we go. So just be patient. They will generate power. All right, let's move on to the solar gens. Now, before we dive too far into these, I have covered on my channel previously. I went through every generator that's in slime fun and let you know which ones work in the overworld, the nether, the end, um, that there's also a config option inside the items YML to allow generators that return nighttime values to be enabled to work in the nether in the end. And there are some generators, once we hit to the void panel above, that will work in the nether, the end, the overworld, above ground, and below ground. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. First one we're going to talk about today is the basic solar generator. Why do I pop holes in my ground? All right. Let's move this. We need to make sure we're on a separate network. Okay, so this one's already fully charged. I've actually had this place for a while. It generates 18 joules per second, stores 900. And that's perfect, exactly where we should be. Because again, the regulator shows per tick. So we've got the 900 buffer and it's generating nine per tick. So that 909 is actually correct. Now, the basic solar generator is the baby to everything else along the line that we're going to need to the advanced to the celestial to the void and ultimately to the infant panel so along the way you're going to make a ton of these now the um, geothermal generator a little bit different a little bit more power 70 joules per second and the question i get asked a lot is this one worth it and my answer is it depends if you're building your base underground, solar generators don't work. It's going to take a long time before you're able to utilize the power of these gens. You've got to make it all the way to the void gen before they'll work underground. So these are pretty good, especially once you're going to make the geothermal, uh, the, the reinforced geothermal generator, I believe. Yes. Once you're at that point, then you're generating pretty good power for something as simple as placing on the ground. That's one of the nice things is it doesn't need solar. You just place it anywhere you happen to be. All right. So going from the basic generator, now we're going to go to the advanced solar. This one's pretty good. 150 joules per second stores a fair amount, especially when you're working your way up, you know, getting going. You might have a lot of these lying around, but this isn't the ultimate goal. We want to continue from here. This one does not have nighttime value. So unfortunately, it's not going to work in the nether or the end. Now, before we get there, we'll stop here real quick and take a look at the reinforced geothermal. This one generates 420. Now, remember, the regular one generates 70. The difference in a recipe, if I remember correctly, is a machine core, a couple of machine plates, and machine circuits. So, again, if you are deep underground and you're not going to build through solar, then this becomes one of your limited options to start with. So, it's not a bad, and it's got a good buffer. So it's a, it's a pretty solid generator, I think. It, the trade-off on the extra materials is probably worth it. Now, as we continue up our solar path, and we hit the celestial panels, 
these are really starting to generate some serious power 500 joules per second it's the equivalent of a core slime fun nuclear reactor and look at that buffer enjoying a nice good evening cup of coffee with a 25,000 joule buffer I can live with that but again no nether or end yet so on the way up to the big power we do need to talk about the advanced nether star reactor so with this I have been running this for a while and actually let's get this onto a power network because we want to talk about a couple of things so first off it only runs on nether stars and it has to has nether ice coolant cells in order to keep the reactor from exploding and it does have to be surrounded by uh, water sources just like the rather regular nuclear reactor is now I'm gonna try to get so you can see this a little bit better that percentage with that little snowflake that's always referring to your coolant cell what percentage of the currently used current uh, coolant cell has left so when that says 60 percent and I look in if I only had one left I need to turn this reactor off real quick by turning it to electricity if I don't need it the reactor won't produce it therefore I can kind of save it from blowing up if I was down on my last one how do you know you're down your last one you look inside if there's nothing in there you're on your last one so if I turn it back on again we start production whether I need it or not it's gonna burn through this okay now there's also a wither effect as you can see in the upper right hand corner of my screen the wither effect actually goes I believe it's eight blocks so let's get actually let's go like eight and a quarter let's just see if that wither effect stays on yep so we've actually got to get nine blocks away my nine blocks away one two three four five six seven eight up oh, nine is here okay so at nine blocks we're gonna see the weather effect finally disappear now there is a hot bar pet and for the life of me I'm trying to remember which one it's the one that eats soul sand that will allow you the ability to actually withstand or is it obsidian I think it's I think it's a soul sand one but I'm trying to remember which uh, which hot bar pet it is let's see here I want to say well let's find it let's find it real quick because I'm sure somebody's going to go well where is it what is it no it's not the zombie wither pet there it is so when this one is eating soul sand you keep a stack of soul sand in your inventory you can be around it and not get hit by the wither effect it's a good solid generator again this one is you know we're going to be producing some serious power it's got a good buffer to it as well let's kind of look at this in the uh, guide I want to pull this one up all right so the nether star reactor is going to at 32,000 joule buffer also generates a thousand per second so this is double a nuclear reactor I apologize if I misspoke before a um, lot of power in that one now I tend to stay away from these only because netherized coolant cells are a challenge I'm not gonna say hard I'm gonna say a greater challenge to automate than a regular nuclear reactor because you need the uh, netherized coolant cells well to get netherized coolant cells you have to geomine and if you're not geomining the nether or you don't have a way to bring items from the geo quarry from the nether into the overworld then this is a reactor that you're probably not going to run simply because you don't have the ability to keep it cool and 98 percent of the time the servers are playing don't always have that now I do play on the Royal MC server and we do have the ability to bring items in from the nether we have the uh, flux machines ender extraction node so I can insert it into my ender chest and bring it out that way we also have the Dynatech Tesseract and that will allow that to bring us netherized coolant cells so this reactor could be fully automated um, in that manner now getting into some of the deep end reactors here the void panel you notice right now this one does have the light expansion nerf on it by default it generates 6,000 joules per second so this one does have a 60% nerf 
It does store a fair amount of power. I mean, 120,000 joules, okay, not bad. So let's turn this one on and see, well, is it running? There's actually power stored up, but however, it does require, and actually, what? let's break it and let's put it back down just to show you. So now you see it's not generating anything. It's connected. It does have to have its direct access to sky blocked. Any block will do. If it's completely underground, any solid block that blocks the sky access will allow that to start generating power. So now there's the big two that are left. The infinity panel and the infinity reactor. And again, the recent versions to light expansion do add nerfs to these. My server currently does not have that version installed. The infinity panel can generate an insane amount of power. So let's place a new one down. It generates 120,000 joules per second with a 6 million joule buffer. So let's get it on a power network here and see where we're at. Okay. So it does work with Sky Access, and it will also work without Sky Access. So it doesn't matter where you place it. This one will work great for you in the nether in the end. This one will work for you anywhere, in any world. It's a nice nuclear reactor, right? No way, man. This is much better than a nuclear reactor. These are very pricey. It's six void panels. It's 12 celestial panels. 14 infinity ingots, two infinite machine cores, and two infinity machine, uh, I forget what those other ones are called, but it's a very expensive recipe. So the other one, before we talk about the advantages or disadvantages of these two, let's look at the infinity reactor real quick. Now this one, let's give ourselves, do I have a regulator over here? I do not. Let's give ourselves a regulator first. Let's get this one off my circuit. All right, this one does have a lot sore because it's been running for a while. So you do need infinity and void ingots in order to run these. The infinity ingot will run for 24 hours. The void ingot runs for, I believe it's four. So you can see how long you have until uh, you have to add more into it, which can be fully automated by the way, okay? So this one generates essentially a quarter of a million joules per second with a buffer uh, that's insane 120 million joule buffer now what would be the advantage of going either route right because they're both going to be very expensive they both have unique advantages and disadvantages so let's go into these recipes for both of these reactors and just take a quick look so the infinite panel there is machine circuit, machine core. So right here is 40 infinity ingots plus another 14. So there's 54 right there. But the infinity reactor is a little bit different. You still have a 40. You still actually you have more. You have 56 infinity ingots necessary, 10 machine plates, plus two advanced nether star reactors, which is actually what we're running over to the side. And I think I said nether star reactor, so please forgive me. Um, that's a lot, but you don't have to craft all of the other infinity and, you know, the void panels to get up here. You simply need to have infinity ingots, machine circuits, void ingots. And, uh, uh, if I remember right, a machine core and machine plates, you already need all those for the infinity panel. So the actual cost of making this one is a little bit cheaper. The downside is that you have to supply it constantly with void ingots and infinity ingots. If you can get to the point, and this is why we'll talk about this in episode five of the infinity expansion, because everything else that ties into that, if you're automating infinity ingots, you're probably better off here. If you're not, or you're struggling to get it going, this might be the better route, but long-term, this is going to cost you more resources to craft. However, it doesn't require any resources to run. You simply place the thing down. So you're not burning through eight void ingots and an infinity ingot every 24 hours. This one you will. But the material cost is insanely cheaper because you need to craft two of these to equal one of these. And... With the infinity panels, 
you don't get the buffer. That's only a 12 million buffer on two of them. This has 10 times the buffer. So if you're looking at a simple crafting cost, that's definitely the better way to go. All right, let's look at power storage. So we have two capacitors on this network. We have the void capacitor at 16 million joules. Seems, you know, nothing compared to the infinity reactor or the infinity capacitor of 2 billion joules. Now, keep in mind, a Simfun power network cannot run more than 2.147 billion joules. Essentially, it's 2 to the 32nd power. If you were to put two of these on a network, it's not going to blow up. It's not going to fry the server. You might have heard that rumor. It just is not true. Um, but what is going to happen is once you hit that 2 to the 32nd power, your regulator will reset back down to zero and start climbing back up again. Now, if you're at that much, it's going to generate back quickly. It's not the end of the world. I see this a lot in the SimeFund Discord as well. People complaining, why didn't my power reset back to zero? It's because the network currently cannot handle more than 2.147 billion. So if that bothers you, if that resetting bothers you, then don't put the infinite capacitor on your network. Run a bunch of the infinity reactors and you know you don't even need a void capacitor at that point. Uh, and even, you know what, if you run, you know, with 120 million buffer at 15, uh, you're at 1.8 billion alone. At 16, you're at 1.92. At 17, you're at 2.04. So your 18th infinity reactor is going to throw it over anyways. But you're generating it that fast. It'll take just a couple of seconds and you'll be back up to power levels that won't even matter. So just keep that in mind. Now, I know the devs have all been talking about what do they want to do in terms of handling power over 2.147 billion. Uh, there's a couple of different prevailing thoughts. One, if you're generating that much power, who cares? It's going to rebuild right back up. Uh, the other ones who want to truly go deep end and make some further end game machines kind of want to see it hold more power. So be watching that for a future release of Slime Fun Down the Road. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition. The last two things I want to talk about today are the infinite chargers. And I was trying to think of what items store a ton of power. And the first thing that came to my mind was a nanoblade. They hold 4,000 joules and there's probably something that holds more. I just couldn't think of it right off the top of my head. Probably in Dynatech, maybe like the flight gem or something. But the advanced charger in the machine, it says, or in a guide, it says 30 times speed. Um, a core workbench if i remember right is 12 joules per second this is charging at the rate of 180 so technically it's only 15 times faster um, it's going to say speed of 30 times i'm not quite sure um, i believe it's 15 times is the actual result still th that's still pretty darn quick well then there's the boomer char i mean the infinity charger ready you, you can you can do that faster than you can eat a piece of food in slime fun or in minecraft in general so that was pretty insanely quick now both of those have some pricey recipes especially the infinity charger but if you want to go deep end or if you have something if there is an item that does hold you know 30 40 thousand joules you want to charge it quick so by all means you know if that's the route you want to go and you've made everything infinity then go ahead and make the darn thing um, i tend to run somewhere around here I don't carry a whole lot of items that need to be powered. So, so guys, that is everything inside of Infinity Expansion uh, for power generation and storage. Hopefully, uh, you got some good information in here or uh, at least out find something new. I want to thank everybody again for your continued support and feedback. Please keep it going. But as always, when we're playing Slime Fun, you got to go Boomer or you got to go home. I'm getting withered, and we'll see you later.